As you know, humans are different from all other animals. We're special. So how are we different? Why are we so special? What are the most important and essential attributes of our species that have enabled us to thoroughly dominate our world? First, we are tool makers and tool inventors, and we use these tools all the time. We use hundreds of tools every day, and we depend on them for almost everything that we do. We create and depend on amazingly complex tools, like cars and airplanes, but we still use hammers, knives, bags, and chairs too. We are a tool-crazy species. Next, humans have language. We can talk, and it's not just for fun. It's extremely useful. Language is information. We can transfer information from one person's brain to another person's brain, and we can coordinate actions, etc. All by making weird noises with our mouths and throats. And we have invented writing systems for storing and sharing our language as information. It's great. Humans are chatterboxes, and for good reason, reading is the most important skill you learn in school. Now, at this point, there's always a smarty pants who says, wait, humans are not the only species that uses tools and not the only animal that communicates by making sounds. And to these people, I say, look, if ravens are tool makers, and if dolphins have a language, then humans can fly because we can jump from here to over there and we move through the air to get there. See what I mean? It's a matter of degree. Sorry to disappoint you animal lovers, but no other animals have anything like human language or tools. Number three, humans have agriculture and trade. A long time ago we learned how to control and grow reliably a few special crops and animals and eventually only a small percentage of our populations were needed to work to produce enough food for everyone. Thus, everyone else was free to create new goods and services, creating markets and trade, towns and cities, etc, etc, etc. Humans are shopaholics. In his book A Splendid Exchange, William Bernstein says, the instinct to truck and barter is part of human nature. Ever since people first challenged the world's seas and deserts with ships and camels, uh, they have carried with them tradable commodities. Next, humans are radically social animals. We organize ourselves into families, towns, teams, cities, armies, countries, religions, businesses, organizations, music groups, fan clubs, etc. We are profoundly social, and it's at the core of our being and prosperity. Many animals are social, yes, but only humans have the unique capacity for the imagined realities that underpin our complex social structures. In his book, Sapiens, Yuval Noah Harari teaches us about this powerful imagination, saying, there are no nations, no money, no human rights, no laws, and no justice outside the common imagination of human beings. Only humans can cooperate flexibly and successfully in such large numbers, and we achieve this largely with our unique imagination for all things social. Not surprisingly, our unique brains are adapted to obsess about social relationships with almost constant concern. Finally, humans make and appreciate art we sing, we beat drums, we write poems, we tell stories, we make movies, we dance, we paint, we act, we take photographs, we play the didgeridoo, etc. Uh, it's all wonderful stuff. These are the unique, instinctual, and essential behaviors of humanity. This is what it means to be human. And our brains, our hands, our bodies, and our psychology is perfectly, intricately, and deeply connected to all of them. And here's where it gets really interesting. Each one of these unique characteristics of humanity has recently been distilled and digitized by a few powerful tech companies that we all know too well. Apple and Microsoft 
have digitized tools. They make computers and software. And in particular, Apple invented the smartphone in 2007. There's a good chance you have an iPhone in your hand right now. Google, meanwhile, has digitized language and information sharing. Google has become a verb. You can look it up in a dictionary. To Google something means to find information about something quickly and easily on the internet, and we usually search with language, right? Facebook has distilled and digitized our social world. Amazon is our digital marketplace. And we go to Netflix or Spotify for artistic diversion, all digital. If you live in China, the companies are different, but the idea is the same. Uh, Google is Baidu, Apple and Microsoft are Huawei, Xiaomi, Amazon is Alibaba, Facebook is WeChat, and Netflix and Spotify are the, the video uh, service of Baidu and the music service of Tencent, uh, etc. These companies have teams and teams of brilliant people educated at the best universities on earth, and they all have the same goal. They want to have your attention as much as possible every day. And they use a sophisticated and highly developed understanding of human psychology and instincts to maximize the amount of attention that you spend in their digital worlds. And they are really, really good at it. And conveniently or unfortunately, everything is found on your beautiful smartphone. By far the best tool that humans have ever made. A magical and amazing little computer that fits in our pockets. It answers all of our questions, it entertains us, it takes us shopping, it connects us to other people, uh, it does so much valuable work for us. And it's the same size, the same size and weight as this. A stone hand axe, a tool that humans used for thousands of years, a tool that our brains are adapted to love holding in our hands. Do we not love our smartphones in part because in our hands they trigger some deep and instinctual connection to tools like this hand axe. The main point is this. We don't just like our smartphones. We are profoundly, deeply, psychologically, spiritually, and cosmically connected to it and everything in it. And these tech companies are perfectly leveraging these connections to do one thing to get as much of our attention as possible. At the end of his book, The Attention Merchants, Tim Wu says, we must reflect that when we reach the end of our days, our life experience will equal what we have paid attention to, whether by choice or default. We are at risk without quite fully realizing it of living lives that are less our own than we imagine. If you're gonna spend six to eight hours each day in front of your smartphone and other glowing screens, make sure that you like what you see. Make sure it's healthy because if you don't change your habits, you'll be spending half of your waking life in front of a glowing screen. Just scrolling and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, I think I'll click on that. 